What's the cringiest thing you've seen a bride and groom do for their wedding? Story one, giving horrible vows and speeches. A part of my family has the habit to use any family gathering as a moment to remember loved ones who passed away. That's not a comfortable habit for me, but to each his own. However, it becomes very weird when wedding speeches and even vows start to include great uncles who passed away more than a year ago. And the only people who actually knew him are my grandparents. Yes, the vows. And not even in an interesting way, but just, if only Uncle Barney could have still been alive while we are getting married. To be honest, our entire family is horrible at giving speeches. There's two brothers, one of whom is my dad and two sisters. My parents can only make joke speeches. The uncle and his family make dry lists of things they do. For example, his wedding speech for his son was in 10-minute monologue about renovating the couple's kitchen. One aunt can only boast about achievements their family members have gained. If there's no achievements, there's no speeches. The fourth is the one with the death speeches. Story 2. At the beginning of the reception, we all had to stand up and sing the national anthem. To be clear, this was in another country I'd never been to a wedding in before. So I thought, okay, maybe this is just a tradition I've never heard of before here. Then I told this to other people, and they were all like, no, that's just really weird. Also, at that wedding, the father of the groom ended his speech with what I'm sure he thought was an amazing joke on how it's easier to build a bridge to Hawaii than to understand what a woman is thinking. It would have been awkward enough had the man not also been standing between his ex and current wife as he was delivering it. Story 3. Bride entered to Braveheart's soundtrack blasting on boombox. Civil service that lasted a few minutes starting at around 1 p.m. She leaves the same blasting Braveheart soundtrack. The mother announces that the reception starts at 5.30 p.m. There is no food and no bar, but trays of dessert bars will be served. We are also told the venue is locked until then, so there is no place to wait. My girlfriend and I leave with a crowd of people to across the street to an Irish pub for drinks. A bit of a party breaks out there. We all get told to knock it off and come wait back at the venue in the hall. So we sit in the hall on the carpet for a few hours without drinks or dinner. Bride and groom arrive and enter the venue to an honor guard of floor hockey players, wearing hockey jerseys and holding sticks above their heads like swords at a royal wedding. More Braveheart music, of course. Place emptied out pretty quick as people either left to go back to the pub or to the fast food place a bit further away. Our dinner was lemon squares and a can of candy from a vending machine in the lobby. Funny stuff. Edit. I should mention that I got guilt tripped into staying after the event to help clean up as I lived nearby and didn't have to work that day. It was the perfect ending. Story 4. Oh, I have two. One, the bride decided to sing as she walked down the aisle. She was not a particularly talented singer, and she was singing over a Carrie Underwood song so we could all hear the original vocal track. She finished walking about halfway through the song and then stood there and sang the rest of the song at the groom, and all we could do was sit there and watch. Two, different wedding. They began the wedding with the groom playing an out-of-tune guitar and singing to the bride. They were sitting on chairs in front of everyone, legit 400 people, and the bride was clearly uncomfortable, which made everyone else uncomfortable. That wedding also included a foot washing ceremony, and when the bride put her shoes back on, she tripped on her dress and fell flat on her face. They hadn't done the vows yet, and the ceremony stopped for 20 minutes to deal with the nosebleed she gave herself. Story 5. Bride shows up almost two hours late to her own wedding. Southern California in an open field, no water, no shade. She shows up and wants to get married in her yoga outfit. The groom shut it down, and when she refused to change her clothes, the groom decided to leave her looking stupid, and they never got married. Eat it. I spoke with my uncle, and it turns out he had speculation that his fiance was sleeping with her personal trainer. When she showed up in her yoga outfit, it was all he needed to call off the wedding. She ended up married to her personal trainer and divorced again. Story 6. I'm sitting here reading along happily and completely forgetting I can actually contribute. I have burned this from the far reaches of my memory. It was that bad, but here we go. Apologies for length. It was a weird, long night. My wedding. If one may call it that was an extremely small and quick affair under an overpass by a fetid body of water, consisting of my over-emotional and violently excited mother, my ex-husband in his dress uniform, and me in a leather jacket trying to reason with the two of them that this is all rather sudden and we're under an overpass for God's sake. Disclaimer. The ex was the mastermind behind all this. We'd been together some years, occasionally discussed marriage. I wasn't in a rush. Apparently he was. Ah, youth. He'd flown my mother down as a surprise, hired a local non-denominational minister, picked under the overpass for the charming view of the open water beside it. 
Nothing good or green lived in that water. It smelled and was stagnant. I remember staring wearily out at it while I listened to cars passing overhead. It was very, very windy. Did I mention it was night? This was less a joyous union and more the beginning of a Law & Order episode. My mother is doing a foxtrot in her joy over our young love. Anyways, I'm an idiot. I go with it. It's bizarre, but I've a strong tolerance for the bizarre. And I feel bad money was spent and mother was flown and whatnot. In retrospect, I should have cast myself into the water before me and cried out for Cthulhu to take me into his sweet embrace. But hindsight is always 2020. I digress. Here comes the minister. He's late. I can see he is also wondering why the... We're all under an overpass in the dark. He comes closer. I get a good glimpse of his face. He is cross-eyed. Now cross-eyed happens, and I mean no disrespect to the cross-eyed, but merciful Christ. I am under an overpass, next to a swamp, mother dancing, ex-oblivious to why I seem disturbed. It is night, trucks downshift above me, and now here is the minister looking at all of us at once with ease, and if I laugh, I'm never going to stop. I will shame this poor man, my idiot ex, my... Mother, save me, Jesus, don't let me laugh. Dead puppies, dead puppies, dead puppies. I keep it together. I do not laugh. And then the minister begins to speak. He is addressing my ex while simultaneously looking at both me and the water. He wants his money up front. That's what the Craigslist ad specified. I proceed to inhale my own face to keep from dying. My mother, God love her, cheerfully volunteers a 20 from her wallet. My ex is muttering and paying the minister. In the back of my mind, I wonder if this man is legally able to marry us. Sadly, he was. Minister paid, the ceremony begins. It's quickly apparent he doesn't know my name, despite introducing myself while trying to not make eye contact. He calls me Georgie. My name is Jenny. I correct him politely. He waves his hand in the air as if swatting off flies. I am Georgie for the rest of the event. It. Why not? My ex takes my hand. My mother starts noisily weeping. The wind really kicks up while the cars rattle overhead. I am straining to hear the minister over the din. He swiftly spits out the we are gathered and so forth with the harried air of a man performing a wedding ceremony under an overpass at night who just wants to go the back to whatever Craigslist ministers do when not on duty. It is time for my vows. I actually laugh briefly at this point, but by now it's panic. What the actual is happening here? Have I lost my mind? I'm getting married under a overpass with a officiant who can't be bothered to learn my name. It's at this moment both myself and the minister forget how the vows actually go. I remember first, I chant with this ring. The minister looks in two directions at once and chants in reply with this ring. All of this is confusing. I shove the ring on my ex's hand and blurt out the rest furiously, at least what I know from watching wedding movies. I'm not about to do a call and response with the minister who doesn't know my name. It's done. We're permitted to kiss. The world's briefest kiss occurs. My mother is good enough to take pictures. In the dark with the flash on, the minister looks absolute nightmare fuel. The flash is what does me in. It breaks me from whatever stupor I've been in for the last half hour. I begin to laugh. This is not the gentle, sweet laughter of a new bride swept up in the rapture of love. This is the deranged howling of a madwoman bereft of her medication. This is senseless, evil cackling in the night. It fills the space under the overpass. It drowns out the cars and the wind. It does not stop. I try, I really do, to gather myself. It doesn't work. I'm too far gone. My mother doesn't look so excited anymore and the minister pulls his eyes together long enough to give my ex a look of deep and heartfelt pity. We head to the minister's car and sign the paperwork on its hood. I'm still laughing. Nobody is saying anything. It is uncomfortable. I look and feel like a lunatic. I'm laughing out of context. This is already much longer than I'd anticipated it being, and this is probably going to get buried anyways, so I'm going to wrap it up. Minister gets in his car and leaves. I laugh. We climb into our own car and head to a chain restaurant. I laugh. We eat. I laugh. We end up at home. I laugh. Mother goes to bed. I laugh. X tries to get frisky. I laugh. You get the picture. Found out later he had a drinking problem and liked to paw up other women whilst drunk. He doesn't see an issue with it. Divorce ensues. Takes a while, but eventually I laugh at that too. Life is weird, but funny. Story 7. Not the groom and bride's fault, but the pastor marrying them talked about his marriage and his kids for 20 minutes. He was obviously going for something of showing what marriage will be like. But he full up was talking about how his daughter, Kelsey, learned to walk this way. And his other daughter's first words were this and that. And that he and his wife make love throughout the house because that's what you do when in love, etc. Bride and groom had to stand there holding hands for 20 minutes right in front of him as the other 150 of us had to listen about his love life and his kids. Story 8. Okay, so as soon as the bride and groom got out of church, 
everyone went to congratulate them and give gifts, which usually are flowers, alcohol, plus envelopes. The bride had a pen and notebook, and she signed each envelope or wrote a notebook if someone didn't give her envelope. Later, as we went to the restaurant where the party was about to start, we waited for two hours for the pair. Turns out they made a stop during their ride to count money. As they finally got to the party, they started complaining that they didn't make enough to pay for the party expenses and earn more. They only spend time only with the rich part of family. The poor tables didn't get the good cake's food. There was literally different food on some tables. I sat near our poor part of family. No meat or cakes made it to the table. Me and like seven other people didn't get forks, only spoons. Why would you give fork to someone when there's only soup for them to eat right? Now, mind you, I gave them enough to pay for like five plates people, and I helped them during preparations. I even baked a few cakes that I didn't get to eat in the end. Half of people got out after like 20 minutes. Bride called them all terrible for ruining her dream wedding. Worst wedding ever, and that is just a part of the whole wedding mess. I wish I had a car back then so I could go back home as well, as the wedding was terrible for many other reasons as well. Groom was cheap, bride was a Karen. Story 9. I was debating whether or not to share this story. My aunt and her current husband had their wedding at an old movie theater. It started off a little rocky with the officiant wearing full goth attire. They read each other's vows, and after that the groom announced he had written a song about my aunt. He's in a rock band. He then proceeded to play an electric guitar and sing a song about having love with her, how good she tastes, and detail vulgar love acts while on stage. Meanwhile, the goth officiant played the drums. Keep in mind both of them have children who are on stage, and our family is watching this, including the bride's dad. Once he was done, they mixed different flavors of alcohol into a margarita glass to show that they are now one and made out. My brother and I left shortly after and attended the wedding dinner that took place four hours later that was equally as crazy. Safe to say we don't talk to them very much. Story 10. Friend's Wedding. The bride wanted to sing him a song, so she did a kind of karaoke thing. There's Bedow singing, and then there's whatever the hell this was. It was so awkward. Also, dude asked a professional photographer friend of ours to photograph the wedding about a year before. Got a super non-committal answer. Never followed up. And was shocked that the photographer didn't show up. After he specifically declined the invitation because he was going to be in another country. Had the entire set of groomsmen rent our ridiculously how expensive tuxedos. Which fine, cool, happy to be here. He's having his tux custom tailored, asks for something ridiculous and gaudy. But when quoted, the price says he can't swing that and insists they do it for about one for the price. They do their best to meet specifications within the given price range, but it's bad. Really bad. So the groomsmen look amazing, and he looks like a clown that didn't put on his makeup. Has another friend make a custom batch of mead for the toast but rents a hall that doesn't allow outside alcohol, so it can't be used for the toast during the reception. It was probably the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Not just the cringiest wedding or even cringiest thing out at a wedding. Story 11. I live in Britain, and as a child, there was a show on CBBC, Children's BBC, just like this. The show was called Marrying Mum and Dad. Oh Lord, I hate that show. It's about these kids who get to arrange their parents' wedding. They choose the theme, the entertainment, and the cake. Naturally, the kids were always making absolutely horrible occasions, because what did you expect? They would choose a ridiculous theme for the wedding, Australia medieval space clowns, and have everyone arrive dresses appropriately. Then they make the couple do some activity or another, it ranges from bungee jumping to VR, for entertainment. Then they have the wedding and eat the cake. The worst part is that the parents have no clue what's happening. They don't know anything until the day, and the children will go out of their way to make them uncomfortable making them eat bugs for entertainment. Everyone just has to go along with it, and you can tell all the guests are really awkward. And then at the end, the couple have to say just how good their Australia-themed wedding, where they ate bugs, was. Story 12. I went to a wedding once where they did a potluck. I guess it okay depending on the type of wedding, but the reception was at a fairly nice venue. The wedding couple was like an hour and a half late, and their best man didn't have a speech ready, so it went on for a very painful 15. 25 minutes? also stating in there that they're going to have great love now that they're married. This was a devout Christian wedding with many of the friends, including me, were from church. By the time me at like table 15 got to eat, I was lucky if I got something that was kept warm in a crock candy, but everything else was room temperature. We were able to go home between the ceremony and the reception, but I bet most food had been sitting in people's cars since that morning. Oh, also, the church that she moved to did the whole no kissing before marriage thing, and started making out with her new husband on the altar, to the point where the pastor had to say, Okay, that's enough? The whole thing was weird. Story 13. 
I was at a wedding when I was eight, and instead of the bride and groom getting up to make their speech thanking everyone, they had done like an awards show. So the DJ opened up an envelope, announced their names, they were handed an award statue, a Barbie and Ken doll, and proceeded to thank everyone in the form of an award speech. In the right hands, it would have been funny, but the bride and groom are incredibly shy by nature, so it was just awkward. I'm in my 30s now, and I still remember this. Story 14. The groomsmen prepared a skit in which they lost the groom at the reception and proceeded with over-the-top hands on hips. Hey, guys, aren't we forgetting something? Well, where can he possibly be? Acting like some high school musical. None of the guests were prepared and silently fussed around with their drinks and silverware. When the whole thing ended, they anticipated like a standing ovation, but it went over the heads of everyone. A lone voice muttered, That was kind of weird. As they made their exit quietly edit. I guess this blew up to the point I should try to remember some of the skit. It was some of the corniest. I saw, not sure if some of them were inside jokes to the groomsmen crew. They all entered into the main area together. Minus the groom, one guy had the fakest cartoony voice. Hey, aren't we missing something? It can't be me because I'm always prepared. Winks and paws for laughs. What about your bow tie? Oh, no. Produces tie, puts it on, waits for audience reaction. No wait. It's the groom. Where can he possibly be? This went on for a bit. I don't remember it all because I was on my phone, not really doing anything but to avoid eye contact every time they set a line and desperately scanned across the audience. In the end, the groom came out through the door when he was cued. I don't think he knew about the skit. Thank God he wasn't there to see it unfold. As for the crowd, who isn't going to clap and whistle when the newlyweds show up at a wedding, so it was all good. Story 15. I used to videotape weddings, so I've seen it all. This one couple from New Jersey were the spitting image of Snooki and JWoww's ex-husband, Roger. They were super into appearances and very over-the-top gaudy. During their church ceremony, they had their very white 60-year-old uncle, with Native American feathers tied into his hair, stand up and chant around the church giving what I can only assume was some kind of blessing. It was so weird and out of place. I assume they wanted to seem deep during their ceremony. They mixed colored sand together in a vase, too. Story 16. So this wedding took place in an Episcopal church. Priest had all his finery on, and the church itself was decorated very nicely. The bride and groom had asked everyone to wear casual clothes. We all took that to mean semi-formal. Nope. They and their kids all came out wearing overalls and white t-shirts, stood next to the priest in his formal robes. The other cringy part was when the groom, during the ceremony, started talking about the Bible verse, let the little children come to me, and insisting it implied, and listen to what they're telling you. Pretty sure they were divorced in two years. Edit. I should explain the little children comment a bit more. It was part of a 20-minute speech explaining how the bride and groom got together. There were plenty of parts in the story where the groom was like, I wasn't sure she was right for me, but his son was pressing him because he wanted a mom. Sad story, actually. Biological mom passed away when the kid was four, and this was eight years later. So it was this long, unfocused story that boiled down to, I'm marrying this woman so my kid can have a mom. Not a good sign when that's your main reason to get married. I focused on the little children quote, because getting advice from children is absolutely not what that quote is about. I knew it, probably half the attendees knew it, and the priest definitely knew it. That whole story would have been fine to tell during the reception, but I have no idea why he decided to tell it during the actual wedding. Story 17. I went to a potluck wedding. The attendees kept all the food in their hot cars while at church then, when we moved to the event hall, they brought it all in to be served. Potato and macaroni salad after being in a hot car for an hour. Delish. Those were the high-end dishes. Some attendees brought two liters of soda or bags of chips. At this same wedding, they also had a dollar dance. Everyone lines up and pays for the chance to dance with the bride. They pin dollars onto her dress. They ran out of pins, so she started stuffing dollar bills into her bra. Story 18. Probably my cousin's wedding. The food was really bad. And I mean really bad. Things that were supposed to be warm, hot, were ice cold and completely undercooked. There was music, but nobody was allowed to dance because we don't want people to dance on our wedding. There was also no alcohol. Not a single drop. But the worst thing was the seating arrangement. They didn't plan on family's friends sitting together. I don't know what they were thinking. I was sitting on a table with complete strangers. They even separated our grandparents from each other. After an hour, my grandmother stood up, walked over to my grandfather, and both declared that they are leaving now to the restaurant down the road, having something good to eat and a beer. I joined them as well as my parents. It didn't took long that people noticed that our seats were empty. 
really easy to figure out since nobody was allowed to dance or walk around in general. We got a call from one of my uncles where we're at. After we explained why we left, he said, You are right. This is bad. And we ended up with 20 guests from the wedding in that small restaurant having a fun evening. I still don't know why they even bothered celebrating their wedding. They also never invited us again. That's actually a good thing because now I don't need to find an excuse why I can't join their future parties. Story 19. The groom gave a speech thanking everyone for coming that devolved in the space of about two minutes into a straight-up roast of his new brother-in-law. They were friends, and the brother-in-law seemed to take it in good humor, but there's only so much implication of, I'm for sure going to be your sister tonight that you can take before it becomes really cringy. It didn't help that A. I barely knew anyone there because I was a plus one, and B. I was on the table with the elderly relatives from that side of the family who were less than amused. Story 20. My own wedding, so me. My brother and our wedding band surprised us with a beautiful rendition of a very romantic song by a guy called Juan Luis Guerra. Just so happened to be me and the missus' favorite song ever. Lots of happy crying and one of the best memories from that day. Unfortunately, my male doesn't like to be one-upped, so she impromptu got a distant second cousin from her side of the family who we did not know to immediately sing My Heart Will Go On from Titanic. He was not a good singer and used a bad YouTube karaoke track and it led to very awkward slow dancing, followed by fuming from her after we cut it short. Terrible feedback from trying to play the track on the mic from phone speaker. Just completely deflated the beautiful moment from my brother's singing. At least I'm happy to say we're still going strong and have been married for 10 years now. It should go without saying that little poop nugget of singing was not included in our wedding video. Edit. Wow, this really blew up my biggest comment in Reddit yet. To those who asked, this is the song. Story 21. For some reason, after the bride and groom kissed at a wedding I was at, the groom, a big D to begin with, took a pair of hillbilly teeth out of his mouth and screamed, I did it again, boys! I felt so sorry for the bride IDK what she ever saw in the guy. They are now divorced. Edit. Hillbilly teeth are those fake inserts that look super nasty you get from a party or gag store. I will also clarify he was belligerent drunk, barely able to stand, and no one, still to this day, knows what he meant when he screamed, We did it again, boys! I don't think he knew either. I hope this clears some stuff up for you all. Story 22. Not the bride and groom, but my husband's cousin has a signature wedding move. About halfway through the reception, he takes over the band DJ Mike and sings this rockin' 60s pop song. I forget which one, but you'd know it. He really plays it up, belts it out. It's his moment in the spotlight and everyone loves it. Except in my husband's family, there's like 60 cousins, so I've seen this move in dozens of weddings over the years. The first time it felt spontaneous and fun, but now I cringe as he heads up for the mic yet again.